let's just say the last couple of nights the Phillies could have used Santa to get some gifts to get some runs. The offense has been stagnant over the last few days. We'll see if Christmas in July will spur on a little success for the Phillies. Tonight it's game three of a four game series against the Miami Marlins. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, along with Ben Davis. Well, we've watched these two games the last couple of nights, and both starting pitchers for the Phillies have been outstanding. The problem has been, and this has been the case since the All-Star break uh, ended, the Phillies' offense is, again, slow to get going. And Pete McCannon wants them to be more aggressive, but it's hard to be aggressive against this Marlins bullpen. They're one of the best bullpens in Major League Baseball in the month of July. They've been outstanding. And it's one thing to throw 98-99, which we've seen a lot of these guys coming out of this bullpen and do. But it's the all-speed pitches that really sets this bullpen apart. They can get ahead with the all-speed pitches. They can put you away with the all-speed pitches. Plus, add in the, the mid to high 90s fastball. That's a good recipe for success. All right, in the month of July, the Marlins bullpen is 6-1. and one. In this series, they've won both games. They have 10 strikeouts and nine innings of work. A.J. Ramos has picked up save number 30 and 31, and he has been basically unhittable in his two outings. He has been. He can push you out with that fastball, but it's that slider right there that makes him so devastating. All right, so the Phillies are hoping to get some runs early tonight, and to do so, they need the middle of the order to drive home guys that get on at the top of the order. Speaking in the middle of the order, well, Tommy Joseph is putting on a heck of a show from a power standpoint. I really like the fact that he has not changed his approach at the plate. These are the same swings we saw from his highlight film in Lehigh Valley. That swing on that home run last night was outstanding. Urena was throwing 95 to 100, but that short, tight swing, he can deposit a baseball anywhere. But you take a look at some of the home runs here. Most of them are to left field, to center field now. That doesn't mean he's a dead pull hitter. I think he can go to right field just as well as he can go to center and left. All right, so we saw that when he was down at Lehigh Valley. He had a home run or two that went to right field. He's hit the fence in right field a couple times here in the big leagues. He is the ever-evolving power hitter for the Phillies, and they need him to evolve tonight against the Miami Marlins. It is game three of this four-game series, Christmas in July. We know it's five days a little early and a few months early as well. Jeremy Hellickson gets the start for the Phillies. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. By Toyota. For great summer deals, visit your local Toyota dealer or buy at Toyota.com today. Toyota, let's go places. By Citizens Bank. The next time you have a question about money, don't keep it to yourself. Ask a citizen. By Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of the Phils. And by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Learn more at IBX.com.
Mark, the starting pitcher for the Miami Marlins, is uh, just now heading out toward the dugout. That is Wei Yin Chen, who the Phillies have seen before. He took a little extra time in the bullpen, loosening himself up. That left his catcher, JT Real Muto, out there a little longer than he would like. Now, Real Muto has to speed back to the dugout because uh, Murphy's got to get himself ready to lead off. Ben asked the other night, well, how does he warm up the pitcher? And you have the answer to that. Yeah, routine. we'll leave it to Ben Davis, a former major league catcher, to ask the question if a catcher is leading off the ball game, especially on the road, the first batter of the game, you know, does he have to change his pregame routine? So I, I did ask JT Real Muto that today, and he does indeed have to change that routine just a little bit to be the leadoff guy. He just started leading off a couple of weeks ago for this team, and uh, he said they had to have a conversation about him warming up the pitcher in the bullpen. Generally, he'd be walking in right now as the game's about to start with the uh, opposing pitcher. However, because he's leading off the game, he's already got his bat in his hand, his equipment off. He had to come in about five minutes ago. So it's a slight change, but nonetheless, as uh, Ben will tell you, any change to the routine for a baseball player is uh, a little bit out of the ordinary. So uh, Real Muto said it does not really affect him mentally uh, when he gets into the batter's box. He has enough time to kind of catch his breath think about the at bat think about who he's facing but he said he wanted to spend as much time as possible with his starting pitcher before having to head to the dugout so a very minor change but you don't see catchers leading off very often in the big leagues you do here for Miami guys yeah absolutely all right so we'll take a look at the lineup for the Marlins it's brought to you by Xfinity Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV after Real Muto it'll be Martin Prado and Christian Yelich John Carlos Stanton bats cleanup, Marcelo Zuna fifth, Derek Dietrich sixth, and the bottom third of Chris Johnson. Miguel Rojas starts at shortstop tonight, and then Wei Yin Chen, the starting pitcher, 0 for 37 as a hitter. They'll face Jeremy Hellickson. This could possibly be Hellickson's last start for the Phillies, depending on what happens with the trade deadline. It could possibly be his uh, last start at home, at least. Uh, the Phillies have liked what Jeremy has brought. But obviously he is a commodity as a veteran and he's got some savvy he's been really good for the Phillies but even though he's a less than 500 record he has been very good for the Phillies a great pickup in the offseason sit right about 90 miles an hour the change up is his go to pitch this is out pitch can throw at any time in account curveball has been good as well and career one and one with a three point nine seven ERA against these fish. Time now for our Nissan Keys to tonight's ball game. Well, Tom, one offensive, one defensive, but don't make me yell. Itch. <laughs> Christian Yells cannot beat the Phillies tonight. You got to pick on someone else to beat you and cut back on the swings. Offensively, they need to cut back on the swings. Take one of those lousy singles the other way. I think Pete would just like contact more than anything else. All right, so here is Real Muto to start things off. Game three of this four game series. Real Muto is three for eight with a run scored in a walk so far in this series. Murph talked about him uh, not leading off that often. This is his 68th at bat as a leadoff hitter, and the first pitch is in there. We're underway, and it's no balls in one strike. Real Muto, 316, five home runs, 26 runs batted in. Since the break, the Marlins have played the Cardinals, now the Phillies. He is 5 for 17 since the break. One ball, one strike. Chopper over to third, a foul ball. And it's one ball and two strikes. It'll be Real Muto, Martin Prado, Christian Yelich for the Marlins who come in a season high nine games over the 500 mark and four and a half games out in the National League East. Nationals are playing as we speak. The Mets have already lost to the Cubs, so they sit six games back. That means the Marlins are a game and a half over the Mets for the wild card. Off speed pitch, waved at it, missed one away. Is that good change up? It really is exactly 10 miles off his fastball. The speed is what gets real Muto. So, what away, and here is Martin Prado. 
last five games for Hellickson. Now his last game wasn't great, but his last five games, he has a record of two and two, an ERA of 2.90. He allowed a couple home runs his last time out, and that was his big problem. Fastball outside. It's one and zero to Prado. Fly ball, shallow right center field. Peter Borges calls off Jimmy Paredes. And there are two outs. A little different look out the outfield tonight. In center field and in right field, Borges playing center for Odubel Herrera, and Paredes playing right. In fact, the entire outfield is different. Yeah, you knew you'd see it. Every righty that Pete McCannon had out there tonight. It's Wei and Chen. Here's Odubel. Duval's kind of swinging underwater uh, recently. Christian Yelich is the batter, and Yelich takes fastball for a strike. It's 0 1. Yelich has hit in six consecutive games. He certainly enjoys hitting against the Phillies, although he's out in front of that changeup. It's 0 2. You can see the balance that he has, though. Despite missing that pitch, being out in front, he still has balance. He's not falling over when he's done his swing. Swing and a miss. He got him out front again. Two strikeouts in the inning. Ellickson dominating the Marlins with some first inning changeups. We'll move to the bottom of the first. It's the Marlins nothing and the Phillies coming up. Just getting set to lead things off for the Phillies instead of Odubel Herrera. And as he gets set to stride to the plate, let's take a look at our Geico quote of the day. It's from Pete McCannon without his glasses talking about the Phillies hitting problems. We're in that hitting funk again. Too many bad at bats. We're not grinding out at bats and we need to do that. Sometimes it looks like we're flailing up there getting anxious trying to do too much. I think the guys are guessing you have to maintain plate discipline. That's the goal right now. Two strikes put the ball in play especially with runners in scoring position. I think that does sum it up over the last few days at least. The Phillies since the All-Star break are hitting just a 152 with eight extra base hits. Let's take a look at their lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. Borges, Goodell, and Franco followed by the first baseman Tommy Joseph and Carlos Ruiz. Jimmy Paredes, the right fielder, bat sixth. And then the bottom third of Freddy Galvez, Cesar Hernandez, and Jeremy Hellickson. And they will face the left hander, Wei Yin Chen. The 30 year old from Taiwan is 5 and 3 with an ERA of 4.90. He got a huge contract, I mean, huge contract from the Marlins, and certainly hasn't lived up to it so far this year. First pitch to Peter Borges, a fastball at its 0 and 1. Well, allow me to weigh in on this scouting report, Tom. Well, you are filled with all kinds of uh, <laughs> work plays tonight. Change curve slider. I'll sit at about 91. 
But that's one thing he likes to do right there. He likes to throw fastballs in and then come back with that slider down and in the fastball at 61.3 percent. The slider at 16.2. He faced the Phillies last on May 17th as Borges fouls it back. He went six innings, allowed two earned runs, six strikeouts. He pitched a dazzling game against the Phillies last year when he was with the Orioles. Borges hits it back toward the middle and a base hit into center field. And the leadoff batter is aboard. Well done. Leadoff man on, speed at the top. And that'll bring Tyler Goodell to the plate. So his last five games, Goodell is 0 for his last 16. He hasn't played since July 10th, which was the Sunday before the All-Star break. So while the Phillies have played the Mets for three and the Marlins for two before tonight, Tyler has not gotten off the bench. But getting a chance to play against the left-hander tonight. Inside, want to know. The Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Deborah Nazarene of Orland, Pennsylvania. Phillies hit a home run at today's ball game, and Deborah will win $100. Stop by McDonald's today and enjoy the new McPick 2 for 250 menu. I'm loving it. Good luck, Deborah. I saw the microphone down there, it was popping up. Murph was acknowledging. He's just getting a little lazy in his old age. <laughs> Still sore from the bike ride, I yeah. see. <laughs> I got there. Plus, he had a bunch of seeds in his mouth. He didn't want to show it. <laughs> Out to right field. That's well hit. Stanton's going back toward the scoreboard. He jumps, and it is gone. A home run the opposite way for Tyler Goodell. A two run shot. It's his fourth of the year. How about that for breaking an 0 for 16. Don Mattingly may want this to be reviewed. He's asked the crew chief Tom Hallion to hold on. But right now the Phillies are on top two to nothing. I think that fell in the orange shirt may have reached over but. It's a good swing regardless for Tyler Goodell. Fastball up out over the plate drives it to right field. No, he did not. Yeah, I think that went over that little small fence out there. It's a good angle to look at it. This could be a better view. No, he did not reach over. No. Well, that'll make a winner out of De Deborah Nazarene in our McDonald's home run jackpot. She just won 100 bucks. I think Don Mattingly wants a, an explanation. You know, they can look at this. From an umpire standpoint, now they'll they'll talk first, and then they'll decide whether they want to review it or not. First base umpire Adam Hamari went out and was uh, out pretty far to look at it. You can see the hands. I know it's dark, but you can see the hands. They never reach over. The ball goes over that little small fence. We've had some that have been questionable this year and last year. But I think that young man brought his hands toward him. But the umpires can look at it. It doesn't hurt. It, it doesn't just, hurt to look at it. But I think that's going to be a two pointer for the Phils. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't count toward the review for the Marlins. This is a crew chief review on a boundary uh, on a boundary view. So Tom Hallion, the crew chief to the right, Adam Hamari, the guy at first base to the left. The Phillies are going to have a two nothing lead here on Tyler Goodell's fourth home run. I'll be the first one to tell you Tom that that ball came off the bat and I just thought it was going to be an F9. See Tom Hallion in there with the home run call. And then I just watched Stanton and he just started to go after it as that call is confirmed. But he would Stanton went in after it very nonchalant like wait a minute this ball's got some giddy up yep. to it. Phillies have scored 27 first inning runs this year counting those two. Pete McCadden now talking to Laz Diaz. I think Pete is wondering if this was an umpire review or if it was a challenge. And I think Laz Diaz will explain to him that it's a crew chief review. 
Boy, for an offense that has really struggled since the All-Star break, that's a nice way to kick this one off. It sure is. Here's Michael Franco with the Phillies up 2-0 here in the first. Phillies uh, in the homestand so far. We mentioned struggling hitting 152 with eight extra base hits. They had come into this ball game with only 10 runs. So averaging two runs per game in the Mets series and the Marlins. Out of play again, and it's one ball and two strikes. Listen to the post game show on the way home last night. They said that Michael had to go through the concussion process after the game from that whiplash he had from that diving play on the bunt. Over to third, Prado charges, and after bobbling it, Franco will be safe at first. Phillies so have three straight hits now to start this ball game. Well, here's the play, Ben, that you're talking about from last night. When he goes down, you can see the watch the way his neck snaps down right there. It was a heck of a play by Michael on that bunt play by Kelly. Well, that base hit ends in 0 for 13 and a 1 for 21 for Franco. And here is Tommy Joseph. Joseph, 264. 13 home runs, 23 runs batted in. Tommy Homer did last night's ball game, crushed one to deep left field into the second deck. And it's one ball and one strike. Well, they're celebrating Christmas in July here at Citizens Bank Park. And Tommy Joseph has been given the honor of being Old St. Nick. I'm sure he got a chuckle out of that if he looked up. That one's blooped down the right field line. And it slices foul. I lead off the game I looked up there and Peter Borges had a little red button he, on his He was nose. Rudolph. <laughs> Peter was Rudolph. <laughs> Tyler Goodell was just one of Buddy's elves. To the Hall of Fame club. Well, here's the home run last night for Tommy Joseph. It's a 2 1, 96 mile an hour fastball off Urena, and he hits it in that second tank, and very rarely will you see a ball go up there. Out to center field. Marcelo Zuna is under it. Michael Franco tags just to draw the throw and one out. Tonight's game is also available in Spanish. Just use the SAP button on your television or change the language on the menu on your cable box. One away, and Carlos Ruiz will get a chance to bat. Carlos hitting 240 with three homers and 11 RBIs. He takes a fastball a bit low. It's 1 0. Carlos looks like he's just going to go sing some songs, go do some caroling on Christmas Eve. Outside and low, 2 0. That one's hit sharply right past Prado into left field. 
Franco round second will hold up there. Uh, Carlos is aboard with a sharply hit ball to left. He scored that inside fastball up. Short quick swing direct approach at the baseball. Not where Real Muto was set it up set it set up. But he gets his hands to it very quickly. <laughs> See where Real Muto is set up outside the ball comes inside. He scorches it. Carlos is now hit in five straight. Now it's an extended hitting streak because he doesn't play as much anymore. But that gives Jimmy Paredes a chance to bat with a runner in scoring position. Paredes making uh, just his second start here in July. Hitting under 200 as a starter. One ball and no strikes. Popped up. Midfield fly rule has been called, so the batter's automatically out. And there are two down. And Freddie Galvis will hit. Freddie is two for 14 in this on this homestand. Get some tough ABs in last night's game. I think Pete was talking about contact. I think Freddie was one of the one of the pupils that he was talking about. Obviously he has struggled against left handed pitching recently and then at bat against Mike Dunn was that was a tough one. It was and he struck out from both sides of the plate last night both on high fastballs. Runners on first and second. Had a fastball 0 and 1. And the ball gets away from Chen for a moment. Not far enough to allow the runners to advance. Well, it's a conservative look for Freddie Galvis. Kind of looks like one of the jackets you and I wore on a on retro night. That one's out to shallow center field. Marcelo Zuna will call him off and make the catch. Side is retired, but the Bills do score two. Tyler Goodell hasn't got many opportunities recently, but tonight he gets that opportunity and he pays it off. An opposite field home run. Two nothing Phillies as we go to the second here in South Philadelphia.
Phillies as we go to the top of the second. Giancarlo Stanton will lead it off. Stanton hits the first pitch over to third. Michael Franco throws him out. Stanton is now one for 28 against the Phillies this year. By the way, tomorrow the Phils and the Marlins will finish up this four game series at 7.05. It's Star Wars night here at Citizens Bank Park. Enjoy Star Wars characters, music, movie clips, and more. Come dress as your favorite Star Wars character. Go to phillies.com slash theme nights for more information. Marcelo Zuna, two for eight with an RBI. So far in this series. And it's one ball and no strikes. Azuda hitting 304 with 17 home runs. And it's at the D's one and one. Outside, two and one. I thought you said you're going to go back to the scorecard. Uh, I'm going to transition back. Uh, I think sometime in the next week or so. On the road trip. Yeah, I'm going to keep the series going. Okay. Yeah. Swing and a miss. A good changeup. It's two and two. I'm going to keep the right to, to not change back, but I'm, I'm leaning toward changing back now. Okay. Just too much work on your iPad? No, the iPad's great. Swing and a miss. Two outs. What's not great? My eyes. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you get older, you get colder, but your eyes also go as well. And so we've been, uh, I've been keeping score on the uh, on the iPad. I think we showed that a few weeks ago. Right. So this is it, what it used to be that I kept score in a scorebook, not a sheet of paper, a scorebook. So I keep score on that. But for some reason, it's killing my eyes. Does that make sense? It happens, Tom. Yeah. Eric Dietrich takes outside. It's one and zero. I must commend you, though. I've enjoyed it. You're, it's like wizardry, on there. I've enjoyed it. It's it's amazing, how good you are with it. Well, for all the young, different screens and all the young uh, broadcasters out there, uh, if you can do this at a younger age and figure out how to let it all tabulate, do it. It does save in preparation time. Right. And you can also keep all, you know, the files. On a hard drive, which, a month which saves out. closet space. Yes, it does. Yeah, it took me a month to find out where the on button was for for mine. <laughs> Dietrich fouls it away. It's one and two. Dietrich is 0 for 8 in the series. You know, we always talk about trying to do things differently. You know, me, Scott, Murph, uh, Jim Jackson, is from a play-by-play -play standpoint. And there's a couple of guys around the league that are doing this. They're doing it on a on a computer or an iPad. And it's you know it's got its benefits to it. Just hurts the eyes, killing the eyes. Fastball, Oof. just a bit high, and it's two and two. It wasn't a bad pitch at all. It came back. I guess that's up. Up or in? I don't know if because uh, Laz Diaz is set up on the inside part. Didn't look like it was up by that side view. Off the front of the dugout, it remains two and two. Take a look here. It's that's on the plate. It's on the plate. And a strike three call. Four strikeouts for Hellickson. Six up, six down so far. We'll move to the bottom of the second here at Philadelphia. It's the Phils two and the Marlins nothing.
Bob and Sarah. Always good for a few laughs in the morning, but tomorrow will be special. Funny man Robert Kelly stops by with his cutting edge humor. Watch Breakfast on Rod presented by Virtua. Tomorrow morning starting at 6 over on TCN. Cesar Hernandez will lead it off. Cesar hitting 277. Cesar hits it toward the hole. Backhanded by Rojas. Long throw, and it's not in time. The speed of Cesar Hernandez, and that breaks an 0 for 20 stretch for Cesar. I about said put it in your pocket. Really good play by Rojas. Excellent play. But he can he can roll down that line. Rojas gets to it, but a very strong arm. Airs it out there and ooh, that was close. Really close. Marlins did look at it. Rojas playing shortstop today for Echeverria. Saw him break. He broke towards second base because nobody was covering. So now Hellickson. Hellickson with six sacrifice bunts so far. Bunts it in the air. And Real Muto bumps into Hellickson. And the sacrifice will be successful. The runner has the right to that path. And Don Mattingly is coming out to talk to Laz Diaz. He's going to wear a path out between yeah. the dugout and Laz Diaz. Yeah, Diaz is explaining to Don Mattingly that he they both have a path to go. Right. And that's that's actually the best way to say it. Hellickson's path is to go to first. I mean, they did collide. That's the only thing. Hellickson did freeze, and I think that might be why the coaching staff was questioning it a little bit. Right. Got the job done. That's all that matters. Or just lifts it in the air on the right side of the infield. And Chris Johnson calls for it. Two outs. Well, I always try and teach whenever we can. And what I liked about what Cesar Hernandez did on that ground ball to shortstop is he didn't change his stride. He hits the front of the bag, hit the front of the bag, hit the front of the bag. That's a shorter distance that that ball, or it's a longer distance that the ball has to travel, a shorter distance for you to get to the bag. So little guys watching at home. Little girls watching home, make sure you hit the front of that bag. What about turning his body at the last minute? I mean, does that cause him any, does it slow him up at all? I don't think so. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I mean, we're all curious. We all, you know, want to see. And at the last moment, I don't, it didn't look like it slowed him down. I don't think so. But, I mean, you want to see where the ball is. You want to see if you're going to get that hit or not. <laughs> Human nature. What to know to Tyler Goodell at a fastball. It's one and one. We see base stealers do it. They'll man on first base. They'll peek in at times to see if there's a swing or not. The ball's put in play. <laughs> Tyler Homer the opposite way his first time up. It ended an 0 for 16 stretch for him. And that one's looped out to right center field of base hit. Rounding third and scoring easily is Cesar Hernandez. An RBI single for Goodell. He has three ribbies in the first two innings. Good for him. What a start. Two out knocks. Can't say enough about him. Well, and they obviously have taken on a, a life of their own recently because the Phillies haven't picked them up. I don't think there's a more level swing that you'll find in that one. Uh, that's one of my keys right there. Take one of those lousy singles the opposite field. You know, he has a home run to right field and now a single.
16 RBIs now for Goodell the three RBIs tonight most he's had in a game this year. And Michael Franco is up with the rudder at first. Owen two. Runner goes, pitch is low, and it's a stolen base for Goodell. Said one of those starts to tonight's ball game. Second stolen base for Goodell. Pete's thinking in the dugout right now. Yep, I put him in the two hole. <laughs> Seriously though, you're the manager. You have a guy that's coming into tonight's ball game, hitting 209. You throw him in the two hole and, and over his last 16. Yeah. Franco fights it off, hits it to second. Dietrich throws him out. It's a manager's intuition, Tom. Sometimes they follow their gut and everything works fine. Sometimes they do. And it doesn't work tonight. It's working at least so far as we go to the third. Jeep stuff the fans trivia question log out to phillies.com go to the fan section for all the information and please submit your answer on the subject line all right Ben what two current NL East teams did Marlins catching coach Brian Schneider not play for not play for the answer will be revealed in just a little bit not play for I'd like to thank the production truck <laughs> for their query this evening. Here's Chris Johnson. <laughs> Johnson one for six with a couple walks in the series so far. And a fastball on the outer edge, 0 and 1. Throw that one all day long. Outside and low, and it's one ball and one strike. This is game number three for Jeremy Hellickson against the Miami Marlins this year. 1 0 so far with a 3.97 ERA. We get a miss. He's got it going tonight, though, with the off speed stuff. Not a 
bad spot. Two and two. Off the end of the bat, and it trickles foul. You know, the other part of tonight is that Carlos Ruiz is doing the catching here uh, for game three of the series and you wonder what that means for tomorrow. Usually at least uh, seven of the last eight starts for Eikhoff Carlos has been behind the plate. But you wonder if Cameron Rupp will get a chance to catch Jared Eikhoff tomorrow. And a line drive base hit it to right field for Chris Johnson. Tommy Joseph actually went over to first base after that ball went to the outfield. I wonder if he thought Paredes might try to fire to first. There's Cameron. Pete said last week he, you know, when he was asked about Carlos catching Eikhoff, he said, well, listen, I don't, don't want to designate one guy as the catcher for one pitcher. He said Cameron will get his chance to catch Jared, and maybe that chance is tomorrow. Here's Rojas, who's been a defensive replacement in each of the first two games. Man, he's got himself some bright batting gloves, doesn't he? I wonder if he got those from Azuna from the All Star game. Oof. Possibility. Over to third, big hop for Franco to second for one, quickly over to first, dug out by Tommy Joseph. Six four three double play. That's pretty, pretty all the way around. The feed right here by Mike Kell is outstanding. In his glove, out of his glove, chest tie right there. Pitcher's best friend. Yeah, ground ball pitcher, they love to see something like that. Happened last night. Lead off single. A couple pitches after that, double play, get nobody on with two outs. Well, that way in Chen, who's 0 for 37. So far this year, had a fastball and it's 0 and 1. Oh and two. Breaking ball and it missed inside. One and two. Oh, the Toyota Major League scoreboard, Washington on Bryce Harper's 20th home run. It was a third deck shot that they estimated went 471 feet. Let's give Washington the early lead. Dave Roberts sent uh, everybody into a tizzy today when he said that Clayton Ker Kershaw could possibly need surgery on his back. Swing and a miss. A 90 mile an hour fastball takes care of Chen. No runs, one hit, and nobody left. Time to get your crab fries. We'll go to the bottom of the third. Philly's up 3 0.
brought to you by your Delaware Valley Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Del Val Honda dealer. Visit DelValHondaDealers.com. Buy Jefferson. Call 800 Jeff now or visit Jefferson.edu. And buy Chevrolet. Visit your local dealer at ChevyDealer.com. Well, on a beautiful night here in the Delaware Valley, the Galapagos Gang is entertaining some of the fans out in Ashburn Alley. I think more fans gravitate towards Iggy. Uh, I would agree with you on that one. Earlier today, it was kind of cloudy uh, here at the ballpark. The sun's popped back out. Christmas in July. It feels like Christmas in Florida today. Here's your boy Iggy. I think he ate that kid's hat. <laughs> <laughs> Selfie and then run away. There's Tommy Joseph who takes inside. It's one ball and no strikes. You saw that graphic in the open about where his home runs have gone. No home run to the right of center field, but all these pitchers keep trying to pound him inside. That one's it sharply to shortstop. And Rojas will throw him out. Well, he's got a nice arm, doesn't he? He does. Speaking of nice arms, I was talking to Tommy Joseph about that throw that he made to second base the other day. How how uh, eyes wide we had up yes. here in the booth. And he smirked a little bit. He said, "Yeah, that felt good." He goes, "It was nice to know that I still had it." Yeah. He said, "When I caught, he goes, I wasn't really the the best game caller. I wasn't really the best blocker of baseballs." But I could throw. Yeah. Well, you could. That was evident in that throw he made to second base. First pitch is in there to Ruiz. It's 0 and 1. I thought it was funny though, just how honest he was. It wasn't the best game caller or the best blocker of baseballs. That's why I try and tell people that you know, what can my son do to strengthen his arms? And if, at times I have to tell him, sorry, but. Either the big man gave you a good one or he didn't. You know, and it's. There are things you can do to strengthen it. Look at Chooch go. Chooch is two for two. Ruiz hits it the opposite way this time. He had a sharply hit base, uh, base hit to left field his first time up. And now fires one to the right side. The throw we're talking about on Friday against the New York Mets. He right, bounces off the bag, creates a throwing lane, and sack. Freddie's reaction was like, uh, "Yeah, that's pretty good in there, yeah. Tommy." As he acknowledged, <laughs> he he doesn't get many opportunities to do that. Brady's popped out his first time up. Seven hits now for the Phils. The Phillies team that remarkably is hitting 218 here at Citizens Bank Park this year with 114 extra base hits. It's coming into tonight's game. Averaging under three runs per game here in South Philadelphia. And for so long, this was such a home field advantage, and it will be again. Guys like Tommy Joseph can provide the pop that we've seen from him recently. We get a miss. Parady strikes out. Two outs. Freddie Galvez is coming up. Phillies will celebrate the induction of Jim Tomey into the Toyota Wall of Fame on Friday, August 12th. It's a 7:05 first pitch. You're going to want to get in your seats early because Tomey will be inducted along with some of the other dignitaries that'll be here at the ballpark. It's all part of Alumni Weekend, brought to you by Toyota, a commemorative print free to all fans. Compliments of Toyota. Figure lefty will be here. One ball and one strike to Galvis.
That one's lined into left field of base hit. Ruiz stops at second. Eight hits now for the Phils. And we're only in the third inning. Boy, his eyes lit up when that pitch was coming in. Such a, a different swing, even from that high fastball, which you alluded to earlier, that he struck out against Dunn last night. It was just too hard. That swing there, under control, nice and easy. It was a bullet to left field. Yeah, he wasn't out too too quickly. No, not his front foot. Pretty slow curve right there. When he throws that curveball 11% of the time, but that was a slow one. His last four starts have come on the road. He's allowed uh, 12 burned runs during that time, counting tonight in 21 innings of work. You know, it's funny, it's a two year deal. That he signed. There's a three year player and team vesting option that could kick in to make it a five year deal. Ties up Hernandez. I don't know if it's worth it. Left handed starting pitching. It's true. Ground ball toward the hole. Rojas flips it to second in time to get Galvis. No runs, two hits, and two men left for the Phils here in the third on a the beautiful backdrop behind us. Phils lead the Marlins three to nothing as we go to the fourth. Upgrade you can make for your everyday business printing. Made from 100% sustainable pulp and high quality fibers that allow for a smooth surface and no jam copying and printing. Order by 11:30 and get same day delivery from who? But WB Mason. We found out today that our printer in our office is dead. Officially. From Larry banging on well, it. Well, we thought that originally there was a there was a um, an internet issue in our office. But it was not the internet issue. Our our new printer has been uh, deemed DOA, dead on arrival, because Larry beat it up. <laughs> I mean, just yeah. keep hitting it, Larry. It'll work. <laughs> there he is. There's pop up. <laughs> We go to the top of the fourth inning. Real Muto leads it off and he takes it inside. So we have enough copier paper, double double A copy paper. 
So now we need a new printer. Over to third, charging is Franco. He's got to hurry. He bare hands and then spins out of his hand. It'll be a base hit for Real Muto to lead off the fourth. Michael so good at that play. Not sure if he had to bare hand it. I mean, Real Muto can get down the line for a catcher, but unable to get the handle on this one. He could be right. He, he may have been able to glove. And then in one motion, flip it to his hand. See, a lot of guys can't make that up in the air. They have to be quicker with their release. But he can make it up in the air with his arm strength. Prado flied out to center field his first time up. Takes an off speed pitch, and it's 0 and 1. Off the top of the Marlins dugout, and it's 0 2. Prado now at 306 against the Phils with 16 home runs. This is the spot in the order that he has been most comfortable during his career, making his 545th start in the two hole. Some guys are just made for certain spots in the order. That one spins out towards short. Galvis quickly to second. Oh, that was lucky. That ball spun right out of his glove, and Cesar Hernandez was able to pick it out of the air. So they get the force at second, 6 4 on the put out. Probably would have been able to turn two there, although it wasn't tailor made. I think Freddie gets in caught in between of flipping it with his glove or flipping it with his bare hand. No, it just pops out. But you're right. That was very fortunate for the Phillies. Oh yeah, that just bubbled right out of his glove. Cesar got his foot on the bag. Very alertly. And Yelich who struck out his first time up. He got three changeups that he was way out in front of. As a catcher, when you think about the last at bat when he was out in front of all those changeups, do you change your approach the second time? He looked so bad on it. What was good at, in that first at bat, though, he was able to throw that fastball, which I thought was a strike, the one at the belt inside. And then he came back with a changeup inside. He got him way out in front. Runs inside 3 and 0. 3 0 Phillies here at the top of the fourth. They have three runs on eight hits. This is Giancarlo Stanton who's on deck. To the right side, a base hit. Prado's to second base he'll hold up there and now runners on first and second with one out and a very dangerous hitter coming to the plate HP's new series of colored laser jet printers Tom deliver unmatched quality and their jet intelligent toner cartridges print up to one third more pages get yours from who but WB Mason today and experience the difference nobody beats WB on HP so now that printer there would look good in our office it would. Very good. Yeah. You know, we'll call by we'll, we'll call by 11:30 tomorrow, and it'll be here by the time we get to the ballpark. Have that giant slingshot, right? <laughs> <laughs> you 
the commercials or uh, a drone. Stanton uh, hit one of the third bases first time up he's 0 for 1. So I get a miss one and one. I know the Marlins have first and second now with one out double play still in order but on a 3 0 swing I'll take a 3 0 single by Yelich any day of the week. One and two to stand. See that change up down the zone. I think he almost had to throw it again. We'll see what he does. Well, he tried to throw it again, but it was a little too far out, and it's even now two and two. He certainly didn't look like he was struggling uh, during the All Star game in the home run derby. And coming into this ball game since his average bottomed out at 192 he was hitting 330 coming into the series I should say got a little bit of a blind spot going right now Popped him up. Cesar Hernandez is there. And the infield fly rule is called. John Carlos Stanton is automatically out. Two away. And Marcelo Zuna is the next scheduled hitter. Two seamer in on the hands of John Carlo. I don't know what the Phillies pitchers are doing to him, but hopefully it continues for. Another 10 days. He just seems very rotational with his upper body. Like his lower half isn't moving, it's just his upper body rotating. Runs outside, 1 0. Ozuna's one of five strikeouts tonight for Jeremy Hellickson. His distribution of outs. Three balls, no strikes. Well, he's had to use a few extra pitches during this inning. You think Dom Mattingly's given this guy a green light? Three and zero. Yes. He may have had the green light. It just wasn't the pitch he wanted. Jeremy thought he had it. Chooch thought he had it. Rio change up. Down the right field line. 
Jimmy Paredes over toward the corner and is able to make the catch into foul territory. Side is retired. Now Paredes was able to eye that up all the way. No runs, two hits, and two men left. Little defense. He took a peek at the last moment. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth. Fills up three nothing. Brought to you by Toyota. Visit buyatoyota.com to find your route for today. Toyota, let's go places. Let's go, Phils. Three nothing Phillies as we go to the bottom half of the fourth. It'll be Hellickson. And then the top of the order, Peter Borges, Tyler Goodell. at a sacrifice bond his last time up two for twenty six for the season he can free wheel right now though no balls in one strike oh and two saw that curveball big hack Ball waved out and missed, and Hellickson is struck out, so one away. And we'll go back to the top of the order for Peter Borges, who is one for two with a run scored so far. Peter batting leadoff tonight. Odubel Herrera getting the evening off. Pete Cadden said today that yeah, Odubel's got to do a little thinking. Give him a night off, take a breather. Murph, it's been a struggle for Odubel Herrera. He's still smiling, though. Oh, I can tell you this, Tom. Yeah, you know, wherever Odubel Herrera is, there is energy all around him. He's in the dugout tonight. You just saw a shot of him. He's been running up and down the dugout, cheering on his teammates tonight. He, so he's bringing it even in the dugout. But you're right, it has been a little bit of a struggle for Odubel Herrera over the last couple of days, Pete McCann giving him the night off. But it's not something we haven't seen before. If you remember back uh, last year in 2015, uh, he had his batting average in the middle of the beginning of May up around 300. He was batting uh, 304 at the time. Then he went into a slump for about a month until June the 5th when he finally broke out of it. During that time, he batted just 183, and the question started, was it just a flash in the pan? Was this guy able to hit at the big league level? Well, after that, after June the 5th, he started on a tear and didn't stop until the end of the season, got his batting average 
back above 300. Finally finished the season at 297. And at one point, Juan Samuel, the uh, third base coach for the Phils, pulled him aside and said, you know what, Oduble? I wasn't sure if you were going to be able to get it back. Your early success, I wasn't sure if you are going to be able to get it back. And Oduble looked at him and said, you were worried? He said, I never was worried. I knew I'd get back to 300, <laughs> and he did. He did late in September, back over that 300 mark. And uh, so, yeah, he's at a little bit of a slope right now, but Pete McCannon even said it today. He is a solid hitter. He's a 290, 300 kind of guy. And when it's all said and done, he expects him to be right there. Yeah, his swing just uh, it hasn't been the same, uh, obviously, as everybody knows. And But you know what he has, uh, and you just expect that hey, sometimes guys go through it. Look at Ben Zobrist, who was so good in the month of May and has not been the same hitter since the middle of June. I mean he's the same kind of guy that you figure will get it back at some point. Exactly. He made the all star team because of his May to Ben Zobrist. Odubel getting a chance to play in front of his mom and dad who are here. Tom Hallion is coming down to make sure Laz Diaz is OK and Laz just waved him off. It's going to take more than uh, a foul ball and the fanatic to knock down Laz Diaz. Hit him right in the inner thigh. A good personality is Laz Diaz. Off the hands, back to the mounds. And Chen throws out Goodell. One, two, three, fourth inning. 1 3 on the put out. We'll move to the fifth inning here in Philadelphia. The Phils still on top 3 0 over the Marlins. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live in HD and over 400 supported devices. It includes a free subscription to AtBat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Go to MLB.TV for details. Top half of the fifth inning. Phillies uh, have three RBIs tonight from Tyler Goodell. So they have the lead as we move to the top of the fifth. Derek Dietrich, Chris Johnson, Miguel Rojas. Had a pitch inside, one ball and no strikes. Dietrich went down looking his first time up. Side. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, for a good part of this ball game, the Braves had a two-nothing lead over the Reds, but the Reds were able to tie it up at two and then win it six to three over Atlanta. 
Joey Votto's getting hot. A couple home runs in his last uh, six ball games. He has 11 hits and 20 at bats during that time. Jay Bruce is 19 home runs. He's got to go in the next two got weeks, to. right? Got to. I watched that game today, and you're right. They were up, and then Barnhart hit a two-run homer. Then yep. Votto hit a two-run homer. That'll go foul down the right field line by Dietrich. Might need some new bulbs. Jimmy Paredes will clean it up. Fifty-six percent of the time, Hellickson's going to throw a fastball tonight. His changeup, thirty-five percent. He used it a lot more the first couple innings of the game. It's been really good. There's a broken bat line drive foul on one hop. Nice play out of bounce. Ball and a strike three call. Boy, that one backed up beautifully. Second time tonight, Dietrich has gone down looking. And one away here in the fifth for Chris Johnson. Very frustrating as a hitter. Definitely catches plate. It's frustrating as a hitter because Helixson just out pitches people. He just does. The stuff isn't overpowering by any means. But he just he trusts his stuff. He works down in the zone. He mixes speeds better than anybody. And he executes. He just executes. Did he not read what Ichiro said about the bats? About why he never throws his bat? The bat is what gets these players to this level. Why would you hit it like that? I'm paraphrasing, but basically that's what Ichiro uh, said. Why does he never throw his bat? Why does he never get mad? He said, "Bat is my livelihood." Yeah. Especially if you have a really, really good one. Looked like that was a really good one. It did. This has been a frustrating series and road trip for Dietrich. He is one for his last uh, 20. Yeah, that'll do it on the road trip. Outside three and one. Ruiz will use this time to go out and talk to Hellickson. With Rojas waiting on deck. As the birds get ready for training camp, Derek Gunn and Zach Berman are counting down the most influential Eagles. Don't miss number three on our list. Watch Quick Slants tomorrow at 6 right here on CSN. See Carson Wentz's jersey. One of the top 10 sellers so far this year. Really? Yeah. Did you get yours yet? No. That ball is ripped deep to left field. It is gone. Chris Johnson with his fourth home run of the year. And it's a 3 1 ball game. With a 2 1 curveball to Johnson, and Chooch went out to the mound probably to say because he had shaken him off three times before getting to that curveball. Threw it for a ball. 
got a three into a three one count. Chiefs probably went out there and said hey let's not get away from what we've been doing here. Been successful for four and a third thus far. But doesn't execute on that fastball. Jeremy frustrated with himself on that. He still has the two run lead to work with. And Rojas is the batter. It'll go foul down the left field line. That home run for Chris Johnson is first since the 9th of June. Liner to center field a base hit. Well, after the strikeout of Dietrich, now you've got back to back hits. It'll bring Chen to the plate, who is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. You figure he's up there to bunt. Chen does have five sacrifices on the year. Even though he's 0 for 38 as a hitter, he has the ability to lay down a bunt. And he bunts it back toward the mound. Hellickson's got to play at second for one. Galvis has thrown it first in time. One six four on the double play. Now the side is retired. Well, he is a gold glover. He made a good decision to start that DP. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth. Time for your Citizens Bank Minor League Report. Citizens Bank, the next time you have a question about money, don't keep it to yourself. Ask a citizen. Well, last night, Jake Thompson, six innings, three hits, or I should say today, six innings, three hits, four walks, and five strikeouts as Lehigh Valley defeated Indianapolis two to nothing. Reese Hoskins hit his 26th home run today for the Reading Fightins, and Clearwater defeated Bradenton five to two. Lakewood defeated Canapolis two to one. And by the way, in the uh, Gulf Coast League, the Phillies defeated the Pirates 10 6. Mickey Moniak, two hits, three RBIs, two runs scored. And here's the double play that ended. The double play that ended the last half inning. That's rotationally perfect. Tommy Joseph crashes. That means Cesar Hernandez has to bust it over to first base to get there in time to get that relay from Freddie Galvis. Yeah, it was a blink of an eye. All of a sudden, you look down and Cesar is over at first base. And I have to change my scorecard. Go ahead. 
one six three. Did you? I did. So Chen finishes his warm ups. And now we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Michael Franco, Tommy Joseph, and Carlos Ruiz. There's Odubel making people laugh. Murph being protected. <laughs> Philadelphia's finest. Feeling safe, Murph? Feel very safe down here. Thanks for asking. Yeah. How are your seats tonight? The seats are excellent. All right. Franco takes inside, one ball and no strikes. I think LA wears that shirt. That one's floated out to left center field for Franco. It's in for a base hit. And Michael has his second hit of the night. So he's aboard to begin the bottom of the fifth. Tommy Joseph, 0 for 2, has fly to center and is grounded out to shortstop. One to Tommy. Tied him up with a 92 mile an hour heater, and it's 0 and 2. Phillies with nine hits so far. They have uh, 10 hits or more in 13 of their last 23 games. Even with the struggles they've had on this homestand. Eight and seven in the month of July. Mm -mm. Your buddy Lorenzo Bundy just Ooh. nearly bought it on that one. Bundy's back behind <laughs> Echeverria. There's Zoe ducking for cover. Back in the Hall of Fame club. One ball and two strikes to Tommy Joseph. That was awful nice of him. Ben, do you think they're sisters? No. Both the hitter and the pitcher were disappointed right there. Pitcher disappointed he didn't get that pitch inside on Tommy Joseph. Tommy Joseph upset he didn't hit that in the second deck again. Real Muto smothers it and it evens things up at two and two. Phillies will hit the road after tomorrow night's ball game. And they'll go to Pittsburgh for three. And then to South Florida to take on the Marlins. Before they visit the Atlanta Braves for four. Win this battle here. Been a very good at bat by Tommy Joseph. You've seen all the pitches. Third at bat, you know exactly where the release point is. Oh, 
Over to third, a foul ball. Now this would be the tenth pitch of this at bat. Five foul balls. And a liner to third caught by Prado and Franco will get back to first base one out here in the bottom of the fifth inning that'll bring Carlos Ruiz to the plate groups of 25 or more take advantage of special group opportunities including discounts theme nights and party areas special fundraising opportunities it's a great way to raise funds for more information go to phillies.com slash group tickets. Carlos is two for two. Ryan Lawrence uh, in Philly Voice today talked about this possibly being the last couple of games for Carlos here at Citizens Bank Park. Carlos's uh, understanding of the fact that he's a veteran. And there may be a team out there that might need his services behind the plate. A team that's battling for a playoff spot. Maybe not as a starter, but maybe in the same role that he has here in Philadelphia. 0 2 pitch in the dirt, 1 and 2. Just need a catcher that can spell the starter at times. Take a look at Yadier Molina, who I think defensively. Has really digressed over the years. He plays every day. I think Mike Matheny is at the point where he just, you know, he was scared to put someone else back there because it just wasn't as as good. 60% Yadier was still better than 100% of the backup. Right. But he is worn out. I think his defensive skills have really diminished. Still has a cannon for an arm, but he doesn't block balls anymore. He gets down on one knee every time. Carlos fouls it over to the screen. I guess realistically, realistically, we kind of know that the trade deadline, some guys could go. I mean, just like Chase Utley, just like Cole Hamels last year. I think Salvador Perez catches way too much. I mean, he is a bit younger and can do it a bit more, but Carlos smokes that one foul toward the sweet level. And it comes right back down to lower level. Chooch does have two hits tonight, but what I'm noticing in his stance is he's not as wide and he's not as crouched. Now, what what is a taller stance like he has here? What does that do for him? I think, think it makes you come down on the ball a little bit more. Maybe he felt like he was getting underneath too many pitches, so you stand a little bit more erect at home plate, be able to come down on that ball a little bit more. And he takes one on the inside part of the plate, so he's down looking. Puts the second out on the board and it'll bring Jimmy Paredes to the plate. Laz Diaz behind the plate tonight. Veteran umpire. Tom Hallion, the crew chief over at third. Dan Bellino, who was uh, in the All Star game this year in right field, is at second base. And Adam Hamari around at first. Paredes has popped out. He's also struck out.
Franco would jump it off that first base bag. But Real Muto was able to keep it in front of him. Seems like Mike Kell hit that single about a half hour ago. <laughs> Doesn't it? Well, the game does uh, slow up a little bit for Chen when there's somebody on base. But that is a lot for a lot of pitchers. No, it's a 10 pitch at bat for, or 11 pitch at bat for Tommy Joseph. 10 pitches. Chooch fouled a bunch of balls off. Be the 23rd pitch of the inning. Swing and a miss. And Chen strikes out the last two batters here in the bottom of the fifth inning. No runs, one hit, and one man left. We have played five. Phil's lead it three to one over the Marlins. of the week is coming off a record tying first half of the season. Jenbar reached the all-star break with 24 saves tying Steve Bedrosian and Jose Mesa for the Phillies club record. Gomez became the first Philly in history to convert 16 or more saves in the team's first 41 games. He finished the first half with a 2.59 ERA and converted 24 of 26 save opportunities. He's closing games. He's doing it with efficiency. And it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Well, in between uh, innings, the Fanatic was all tied up with the Mouse King. And then was able to get the Mouse King to get distracted. And he left with the uh, Pennsylvania Ballet's Nutcracker. We don't need this sword. That one's out to right center field. Paredes comes running in, makes the catch. One pitch, one away. In case you didn't know, the uh, folks here at Citizens Bank Park are celebrating Christmas in July. Phillies won't be here on the 25th, so they decided to uh, celebrate tonight. There have been items that have been uh, donated at the gates. The Phillies ball girls and the wives have been around. You finish your holiday shopping? Uh, I, it, it got on me so fast, I, I really didn't. I'm going to get gift cards this year, this month. Here's Prado. He's 0 for 2. He's flied out and he's reached on a fielder's choice. Boy, this has been a solid outing for Jeremy Hellickson tonight. Very efficient as well. That was just the 70th pitch of his of his evening. Outside and it's one and one. One of San Jose Elves enjoying the night at the ballpark. Yeah, 
inside two and one. Fly ball down the right field line. Paredes was playing shallow into foul territory. Boy, he's been all over the place tonight. Two outs. On Tuesday, August 2nd, the Phillies will take on the San Francisco Giants. It's the first of a three game series. It wraps up on Thursday, the 4th, with a Citizens Bank business person special and also a Pride of the Phillies print featuring Ryan Howard and Carlos Ruiz. New Moore's kids run the bases for fans 14 and under. There's the print we were talking about. The running the bases will take place afterward. Tickets can be purchased by going to Phillies.com. Two outs for Christian Yelich, who is one for two. Speed pitch and it's a bit low and it's two and one. One run, five hits for the Marlins. To the right side, off the glove of Tommy Joseph. And a base runner for the Marlins. One that Tommy would like to have back. And it'll wind up being his fourth error of the season. It's almost as if he was trying to cheat toward first base before he actually had the baseball, Ben. Actually, he was just trying to get it on a short hop. Yeah. Paul just had spin to his right. He comes through it with his glove instead of going with it. So a two out base runner here in the top of the sixth and Giancarlo Stanton. He's grounded out and he's popped out to the right side. First pitch inside one and oh. Popped him up again. Cesar Hernandez again, this time to his left, puts it away. And Hellickson with one run allowed on five hits through six innings. No runs, no hits. One man left. There was one Phillies error onto the bottom of the sixth here in South Philly.
Baseball is brought to you by Nissan. Shop choose Nissan.com. Buy the Pennsylvania Lottery's new Mustang Instant Game. Players must be 18 or older. Please play responsibly. And by W.B. Mason. You can't go wrong when you buy right. Well, with Ben Davis and Greg Murphy, I'm Tom McCarthy. We're on to the bottom of the sixth inning. Phillies lead at three to one. Folks usually get dressed up for the holidays. The gentleman looking sharp in his bow tie. We head to the bottom of the sixth. Freddie Galvis. Galvis his last time up lined a single to left field. Down the right field line that'll be out of play two and one. We got to give Chen credit he gave up the three runs in the first two innings. Now the Phillies have had base runners since that time. But he has not allowed any more runs to score. And a line drive base hit it to left center this time for Galvis. He went hard out of the box. And he'll stop at first base. So a leadoff single. And that'll bring Cesar Hernandez up to the plate. Time now for the Jeep Stuff the Fans Trivia Quiz answer. All right, Ben, here we go. What two current NL East teams did Marlins catching coach Brian Schneider not play for? Well, I do know that he played for the Nats. Correct. The Phillies. Correct. And the Mets, which leaves the Braves. Correct. And the Marlins, he did not play for. He did play for the Expos as well. Thank you for adding that one. You are correct. Log back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. And thank you, Ben Davis, for playing Jeep Stump the Fans. My pleasure, Tom. Here is Brian Schneider, former Phil. Many people think will be a major league manager at some point in his career. Over to third. That's a fair ball inside the third base bag down the left field line. Galvis to third. He'll be held there. A double for Cesar Hernandez. Two for three tonight. Now the Phillies have something cooking to start the sixth inning. Nice to see it. I'm anxious. You know, Pete McCann and his wheels are spinning right now, but this is a good swing, good quick swing by Cesar. Prado off the line. Yellis gets over to it, gets before it does get to the wall, otherwise Freddie would have scored. Juan Nieves is out to talk to uh, Chen. He does have Whitgren warming up of the bullpen. All right, you're talking about Pete's the wheel spinning for Pete. He has put that suicide squeeze into effect a handful of times this year. And he has done it with Hellickson. Yep. Hellickson, we mentioned that six sacrifice bunts. So if he were to do it it would not be a surprise <laughs> to anybody that he does it in this spot. I would have John Johnson in on the grass. Well he has two RBI's this year Hellickson does both of his RBI's have come on the squeeze. The only risk that that runs in having Johnson play in so so far is that if Hellickson catches one deep in the zone he can shoot it to right field no problem. Looks like they're going to play everybody in. And when I mean in I mean in in. <laughs> Uh, 
back to the screen one ball and one strike. Two and two to Hellickson. See Jeremy trying to pull those hands in and get a ball up the middle. You don't want to get out and around a pitching side and just smothered it to the left side here. And hits it to first. Johnson will hold the runner over at third. And he tags out Jeremy Hellickson for the first out. And now the top of the order will be charged with trying to get those runners home from second and third. Jeremy caught that ball very, very deep. Must look like he was about to get a catcher's interference. That's how deep it was, right out of the catcher's mitt. I heard a stat last night when I got home. Jacoby Ellsbury. How many catchers interference do you think he has this year. I know he set a record. Yes. Yeah I, I don't know how many it is this year. I know it's a record though. It's July 19th last night. He had nine. That's amazing. It is. That's that blew me away because he can't go any farther than the back line. No. Well Don Mattingly is going to go farther here. He's going to go into the bullpen. That's going to be it for Chen. Pitching change with one out here at the bottom of the sixth inning. Thursday August 18th after the Phillies take on the Los Angeles Dodgers the first time ever a concert following a Phillies game it'll be Chase Rice the country music star will perform his post game concert for information go to Phillies.com your game ticket is your concert ticket no additional purchase is required enjoy country music night here at the ballpark go to Phillies.com for more information. Nick Whitgren is the new pitcher for the Marlins as Chen's evening is complete he is responsible for the two runners on base. So Don Mattingly goes to the right hander. 2.45 ERA part of a bullpen that's been excellent exceptional during this series. 
Phillies have managed only one hit against this bullpen. Nine innings, one hit. Peter Borges is one for nine with a runner at third and less than two outs. Way upstairs on that first pitch, it's one and zero. Well, here's the bullpen's numbers: ten strikeouts in nine innings. That's the key too, is that they are striking, striking Phillies hitters out. That is something. Fly ball up center field. Ozuna is under it. Tagging at third is Galvis. Ozuna is going to gallop and then fire to the plate. He is safe at home. A sack fly, four to one fills. Over to third goes Cesar Hernandez. You want to talk about letting the ball fly. Good base running by Cesar to get to third base. I know there's two outs, but now you can score in a bunch of different ways. But from our vantage point, did you not think that ball was going to get there in the air? Uh, I <laughs> thought there was a chance, yes. He has a bazooka. That hop definitely slowed the ball up, but Freddie in there easily. What an accurate throw, though. So an RBI for Borges, his 20th of the year. Big run. Yep, Tyler Goodell has three of the four RBIs tonight. He's got a chance for another one here. Already with one two out hit and an RBI. Nice job of hitting by Peter. Staying in the middle of the field. His knuckles foul. This was back at the first inning. His opposite field home run. Ball just kept going and going. Gets into that first row. Make it two nothing, Phils. Phillies with 11 hits tonight. A few off the end, but for the most part, the hits have been very crisp. Good hard contact. And Goodell is down looking. The Phils settle for a run here in the sixth inning. They leave one over third. Peter Borges gets the RBI to make it 4 1 Phils as we go to the seventh.
time now for your Delaware Valley Honda dealers game summary that spot where we just showed you before the uh, line score popped up was important tonight that's where Tyler Goodell's home run went his two run shot he has three RBI's he had three RBI's in the first two innings Jeremy Ellison's been strong through six he'll be in the seventh against Marcelo Zuna and he delivers a strike on the inner half and it's 0 and 1 Ozuna tonight he is 0 for 2 he has struck out and he's flied out. Fouls that off his foot and it's 0 and 2. <laughs> Dustin McGowan loosening up at the pen for the Marlins. Zuna is going to be tagged out. Ozuna is saying that he fouled that one. Laz Diaz is saying no. Ozuna is pointing to the dugout. It's not reviewable. It, you can talk about it, but it's not reviewable. If Laz Diaz wants help, I don't know if he needs help on it. It never hit the ground. It just went in and out of the glove of Ruiz. Ruiz kind of reacted quickly. He did react quickly. You can, you definitely can hear something, and Diaz is saying it was uh, Carlos's glove. Take a look at it real quick. Yeah, I think he just missed it. Ball it off the uh, edge of the glove of Carlos. There was no misdirection, Ben. No, I think the the first. Tip that you heard was off his mitt. The second one was off his shin guard or the inside of his ankle there. It's kind of a double click there. Dietrich swings at the first pitch and skies it to center. Peter Borges, one handed grab. I don't think Marcelo Zuna was happy about that when he went back to the dugout. Watch the path of the ball. Ruiz wants it up. It was down. It doesn't look like it hit the bat. It hit the glove, hit the uh, sh one shin guard, and then ricocheted to the other side. And that's. What the Marlins dugout heard was that Nick off his glove. Yeah, they they reacted because Ozuna reacted. Right. I would think. Johnson does a little dancing, two and zero. Oh. Every time the Phillies pitchers retire, the opposition one, two, three. Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. Johnson getting the green light 3 0. He's got two hits tonight. Does it hurt? One of those being a homer. Go to that anytime he wants. Might not be a bad idea to go to it again. The 3 2 pitch. Got him. He went to it again. Two strikeouts in the inning for Chris jo or for Jeremy Hellickson. That's a 10 pitch seventh inning for the Phillies right hander. 1 2 3 go the Marlins. He struck out Ozuna to start it and he strikes out Chris Johnson. 
to finish up the top of the seventh. Time to stretch here in Philadelphia. Breaking out here at Citizens Bank Park. I'm not sure what's going on as we go to the bottom of the seventh. Four to one, Phillies on top. Supposed to have bubbles on uh, Christmas, Ben? Do you have bubbles on Christmas? Of course. I thought that was just New Year's. Friday, August 12th, we'll kick off Alumni Weekend there at Citizens Bank Park. Toyota Jim Tomey Wall of Fame induction will take place in game one. Game three, the Toyota Phillies Wall of Fame fathead to all fans. Plan your outing now by going to Phillies.com. Miguel Rojas moves from shortstop to first base for the Marlins, taking over at short as a Danny Echeverria. The new pitcher is Dustin McGowan, who did have a tour of duty with the Phillies. He'll take over for Nick Whitgren, who for the first time this year allowed an inherited runner to score. Michael Franco leads it off for the Phillies. That's the stat you love, obviously, as a reliever, but as a starting pitcher, you love that stat. Because there are your runs out on the field. One ball and one strike. We saw McGowan earlier this year. His the velocity on his fastball is definitely up. Middle at Chavaria near the second base bag. And one out here in the seventh. And that'll bring Tommy Joseph to the plate who's 0 for 3. He's flied out, grounded out, and lined out. And McGowan, when he was with the Phillies, he would hit 95. But he's been consistently at that level this year. His change up at 88, his slider at 87. Amazing how I mean he's been around for for a while and to be able to get that velocity back. Former starting pitcher who has done a pretty good job in the bullpen this year for the for the Marlins. There's some thought that the Marlins will try to add to their bullpen even though they've already picked up Fernando Rodney which was an excellent pickup as a setup man for A.J. Ramos. The coveted relievers out there are the guys that are on the Yankees, Andrew Miller and Aroldis Chapman. Swing and a miss. Joseph strikes out. Two quick outs. Well, you look at it, if, if it does get into a situation where you're running Ramos out there for consecutive wins or consecutive saves, 
you have a myriad of pitchers down there that can close. They all have closer stuff. An option for Don Manningly and Juan Nieves. There's been a lot of talk about whether the Cubs would pull the trigger and get Aroldis Chapman or Andrew Miller. If you're the Cubs, you know the Yankees will begin with Schwarber. I can't imagine the Cubs would give him up, although they do have a lot of young hitters. Would you take that trade? I mean, Schwarber just had I would every, not. every ligament in his knee replaced or fixed. Uh, I would not. I, I mean, Schwarber could eventually be a DH, but if I'm the Cubs, I want to see if I can find a spot for him yeah. to play. Two balls, no strikes to Ruiz. Swing and a miss, two and one. I know what you're saying uh, because he's not going to catch right. for the Cubs. I'm saying that's an awfully risky gamble. I mean, such a young talent to come up and do damage, and a lot of it. Three balls and one strike. She's getting a kick out of the fanatic. <laughs> that is a great reaction. Three balls, two strikes. Opposite way, sharply hit. Dietrich on one hop. It's a comfortable play. And it's a 1 2 3 inning for McGowan. Phillies go down in order in their half of the seventh. We'll come back for the top of the eighth. And the Phillies up by three. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Toyota. For great summer deals, visit your local Toyota dealers via Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Buy McDonald's. Stop by McDonald's today and enjoy the new Big Pick 2 for 250 menu. Ah, I'm loving it. And buy your local Ford stores. Celebrating Christmas in July. That is not Tommy Joseph next to the Fanatic. That is actually one of uh, Santa Claus's helpers. Phillies have made some adjustments to their outfield defense. Peter Borges moves from center field to right field. And Odubel Herrera comes on to play center. Ichiro will lead it off as a pinch hitter. Came into that ball game on Monday night. Pinch hit with a walk and then he had a ground out. Ground out last evening as well. Inside. It's 
So we get a base two and one. I guess that means Don Kelly will come on to play first base for the Marlins with uh, Ichiro pinch hitting for Rojas. 2 1 pitch. And it's 2 and 2. Rojas got hurt. I don't know. I was wondering the same thing. That one sails. It's three and two. Just the 94th pitch for Hellickson here tonight. Ramos, as you saw, warming up. Echeverria, who came out to play shortstop, is going to get a chance to bat for the first time. Just try to stay alive. <laughs> Peter Borges was playing that way. He goes back sprinting and makes the catch. You want to talk about perfect placement from a scouting standpoint. I mean they had that lined up perfectly. Well done Juan Samuel. It still wasn't an easy catch but look how far over I mean that is straight away right center gap. See so a well over in the left center gap. Wow. A heck of a play. Sammy's talking about the alignment right now. He's going to bask in the glory a little bit. See what I did there? See what I did there, <laughs> fellas? <laughs> well, now with that Chavarri up, they, they align it the other way with Borges over toward the line and right and shallow. And Oduble into right center field. Echeverria on the year hitting 244, three home runs, 27 runs batted in. This has been free and easy tonight for Jeremy Hellickson. The only run he's allowed was the home run to Chris Johnson. Oof. Off the hands over to first. Tommy Joseph has it, flips to Hellickson covering, and there are two outs. This is a season high, seven and two thirds for Jeremy. Jeremy is also part of our Hyundai defensive play of the game. Originally, I thought it was a 1 6 3 double play, but no, it's a 1 6 4. Freddie clears himself, makes that replay, that relay, I should say, and that's a good feed by Jeremy to Freddie to Cesar. 1 6 4 double play. That's your Hyundai defensive play of the game, brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers. About to throw his 100th pitch of the night. The ZRA at the start of tonight's game was 4.03. Right now it's sitting at 3.85. Trying to pick up his seventh victory of the season and end this brief three game losing streak. It's one thing to have a scouting report and ex know exactly what you want to do when you're on the mound, but executing it sometimes, obviously, is tough. And obviously they wanted to go in on a lot of these right handed hitters. I don't remember him jamming and I mean jamming right handed hitters more than he has this evening. And it's set up the change up to right handers to the outer edge. Big time. Big time. Now we've seen it with real Muto with these first two pitches. They've been soft away. Ground ball left side. Freddy Galvis backhands, hurries the throw in time, and it's the longest outing for Hellickson since August 5th, August 11th of last year against the Phillies when he went eight innings. Eight strong tonight, five hits and one run. We'll move to the bottom of the eighth. The Phillies on top, four to one.
go to the bottom of the eighth inning here at Citizens Bank Park. Jeremy Hellickson might get a chance to go back out there in the ninth inning. It looks like he's uh, prepared to do that. If he doesn't, these have been eight solid innings he for the been, Bills. You're right. Uh, solid, I think, is an understatement, Tom. He did make the one mistake to Johnson for the home run, but he has been good. The changeup that we talked about has been stellar. Mixed in a couple curveballs, not as many as we're used to seeing. But he was very good, peeled his position. We just saw that in our Hyundai defensive play of the game. But just excellent job of pitching tonight. Really just trusted his stuff, had a game plan, and went out and executed. He was 100% outstanding tonight. Look at that line. That is terrific. Eight strikeouts over eight innings, five hits allowed. So now as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning, the Phils will uh, look for some insurance. Dustin McGowan remains in the ball game, And he'll face Odubel Herrera. Up for the first time. A little more than 20,000 on hand tonight here at Citizens Bank Park. That ball's hit well out to right field. Stanton going back toward the scoreboard. He's going to have room right at the edge of the board. And he makes the catch. So one away. Freddie Galvis is coming up. Jen Mark Gomez is loosening up out in the bullpen. It is a safe situation. Phillies with a three run lead right now. By the way, a little more than 20,000 watching here. Apparently, there's uh, hundreds of folks watching out in Radnor Township outside. Really? Yeah. Hope they're enjoying themselves and a beautiful night for baseball. Bob McClure on the horn. Andres Blanco, bat in hand. One ball, one strike. Galvis down on strikes. And Real Muto will finish it off by firing the first with Don Kelly taking the throw. Now with two outs, Cesar Hernandez is coming up. Let's get caught up on what's going on around baseball. Here's Greg Murphy. All right, thanks, Tom. Brought to you by T-Mobile. It's our greater coverage of baseball. You guys were just talking about it, and the Cubs are doing it. They are bolstering their bullpen. They traded today for left-hander Mike Montgomery from the Mariners for a few prospects. Montgomery had a 2.34 ERA so far in 32 games for Seattle. He may help the Cubs indeed. The Rangers dealing with some injuries. Prince Fielder is done for the season. He has been battling that herniated disc in his neck. It is uh it has returned and he is now done for the season. Also Shin Su Chu heading to the 15 day disabled list. He has a bad back. They hope that he'll be OK in about 14 days or so and he'll come off the DL and be able to help those guys. Of course they have a four game lead in the AL West and you mentioned Clayton Kershaw. Yes the possibility of surgery the, uh, the Dodgers are very hopeful that that is not necessary but it is there they are not ruling it out uh, they are still very hopeful that even with the surgery he would be able to return this season so we'll wait and see on that one guys all right Murph watch your back there's some crumb snatchers right over your shoulder I knew that one and two Murph, good job. Murph got some affirmation from somebody <laughs> <laughs> That was me. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the one-two pitch to Hernandez. Back toward the middle, a base hit. Cesar with a three-hit night. And Andres Blanco is indeed coming up to pinch hit. Just hoping you get a chance to finish Jeremy Hellickson, but. What a game. What a game. Well, he needs uh, Jenmar Gomez to finish it off. Just 102 pitches.
it is kind of, I guess you could say, ironic that the heart, the softest thrower. Wow. Oh, look at that. Blanco's bat goes bouncing into the stands. They throw down a second. Cesar is safe at second. You think that kid sitting some 110 to 20 feet away ever wow. thought he'd get a bat this evening? That was far. Unfortunately, well, everybody's okay. Yeah. He hit an open seat and then bounced, and the gentleman in light blue is the one that was able to corral it. And he gave it to the uh, youngster who uh, was able to get a baseball for him with the gentleman that gave him the bat. One ball and two strikes to Blanco. And he fouls it at the plate. It remains one and two. I was saying it's kind of hard to believe that the, the softest thrower in the bullpen is the closer. Now, if you think about it, I mean, Ramos is a 93 to 95 guy. Oh, yeah. Goes from second, pitches hit out toward left field. Yelich venturing back. He has room, reaches up, makes the catch, and the side is retired. No runs, one hit, one man left in scoring position. It is a safe situation for Genmar Gomez when we come back for the top of the ninth. Coming up after the ball game, Marlon Anderson is standing by to talk about tonight's game and pitching performance for Jeremy Hellickson and hopefully a Phillies victory only on Cure Auto Insurance presents Phillies Post Game Live. We go to the top of the ninth inning, and Jenmar Gomez will be the new pitcher for the Phillies, trying to close it out for the save. Jeremy Hellickson went eight innings tonight, first time since August of last year. That he goes eight innings. Andres Blanco stays in the game to play first base. After pinch hitting. Jenmar blew the, uh, the save in game one of this series. He had a 2 0 lead. He has a three run lead here. Martin Prado takes strike one. It's 0 and 1. Prado is 0 for 3 in this ball game. It'll be Prado, Yelich, and then Giancarlo Stanton. Philly's trying to end this three game losing streak and get their second victory on this homestand.
Over to shortstop Freddie Galvis stays down on it. That's a quick out one away. I'll say it again three quick outs fastest way you can get them. Well, one more game tomorrow on this homestand seven o'clock on CSN. Jared Eikhoff will get the baseball for the Phils. Not to jinx anybody, but doing these line scores. Not yeah. one walk in tonight's ball game. Oh man. I had to say it, didn't I? Yeah, you did. How many years you play this game? That's strike one, Tom. <laughs> Yelich does have a hit tonight. He's also reached on an error. That was the error by Tommy Joseph earlier. Fastball on its 0 and 2. This pitch. Couple pitches nearly the same spot. And Laz Diaz was not biting. Two balls and two strikes to Yelich. He's trying for their 44th victory here in 2016. Over to third base, Franco surrounds it, stumbles a bit, fires to first in time. It's not an easy play because Yelich was moving. Hey, he's a bigger guy, but he can get down the line, and Franco has to get to it, ranging to his right. But again, when you have that thing attached to your shoulder, you can uh, you can spare a little bit of time and let <laughs> it go. What an arm he has. Stanton hits one out toward left center field. It's not deep. This should do it. Odubel's there. Makes the catch. A one, two, three, ninth inning. For Jen Mar Gomez as he's able to pick up the same and the fills with a comfortable four to one victory over the Miami Marlins. Tyler Dell, have yourself a night. Three RBIs, a stolen base, an opposite field home run. What a ball game. Excellent ball game all the way around. Here are WB Mason deliveries of the game. We'll turn to Tyler Goodell, who provides them. Peter Borges on first base. Nobody out in the first inning. Phillies go up 2 0 real quickly in the second inning. Two outs, couple strikes. Soft serve to right field to score Cesar Hernandez, who got on with a single earlier in that inning. Three RBIs, stolen base, did it all. They are your WB Mason deliveries of the game. So the Phillies take game three of this four game series. They win it four to one, another double digit hit night. We'll be back to wrap it up and talk to our one of our stars when we come back.